is the Glass Cannon Network. Go off, kings and queens of Duskfall. We are ready to slay. This no. is Haunted City <laughs> on the gap. No. This, what's wrong? Jared. Me, can I please finish my okay. intro? Because it is fire. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Network. And it is filled with so much awesome. My name is Jared Logan. I am the game master. With me, I have my players who, uh, if they think they're so great, why don't they come up with their own intro? <laughs> wow. Josephine McAdam, Ross Bryant, and Abu Salim. Uh, before I let them talk, and I want to stress, do not talk yet. Um, I want everybody to know that we are playing Blades in the Dark. And uh, all joking aside, it's the greatest role-playing game written in the last... 20 years. It's by John Harper and Evil Hat. Buy your copy wherever fine gaming books are sold. All right. What was wrong? I was trying to appeal to Gen Z with my intro. What do you mean? But we have a lot of Gen Z viewers. And <laughs> I've been. Do we? we? Got, yeah. And we did some polling of them. We, uh, oh. we, did, we did a demographic survey with Gen Z. And a lot of people said I skewed a little too old. So I'm trying to add a little bit more youth to my presentation of Blades in the Dark. It definitely uh, made you appear younger. Absolutely. Okay. 100%. Like, Sweet. totally. Dope. Dope. That's great. Dope. Yes. Yeah, dope is helping um, too. Um, yeah, this is all super helpful go for Go off, slay. Go you off, were definitely King. serving. Fire. Yeah. I'm mm. serving so much Gen Z vibes today. <laughs> <laughs> how old is everyone i'm 50 i'm 59 years old how old is You're everybody 59. else 59 are you 59 I'm, I'm 59 you're 59 today actually what uh, really wait it's, yeah are you serious are you serious it's your birthday no i'm not 59 how dare you <laughs> how dare you mm -hmm. The fact that you even think that that's possible. Listen, man, I was going to say you look fantastic for 59, man. I was going to literally right. be like, I wish I looked like you when I'm 59. Fantastic yeah. for 59, but terrible for 43. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but it's not your birthday either? No, he, he's, no he's it's lying. not my birthday. My birthday Wait, is... Well, you lied about everything. God, what is this web of <laughs> lies? Yes, welcome to the Hall of Mirrors, and I am the carnival barker who tempted you in. The oh, uh, the birthday, my birthday is January 16th. Oh, wow. And uh, if you're out there, if you're listening, if you're watching the show, uh, you can send gifts. The Glass Cannon <laughs> Network. Uh, I'll have the address for you in the next episode. I like <laughs> I like books. I like um, I still do Blu-rays. I like um, physical media. Mm -hmm. uh, T-shirts are good if they've got like kind of a cool character on them. Um, Who buys DVDs like, nowadays, man? Well, I, I do Abu. He does because he's Gen X. Apparently, <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm Gen X, and uh, and we and you know. It, I'm, Physical media is cool, man. When no, I take for sure. My, when I take my Blu-ray and I put it in my little Blu-ray player, I get a little bit of a... Ex I get excited. You have a Blu-ray player? Yes, I do, Josephine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have a Blu-ray player? Well, I no, do, but it's was... a PlayStation, you know. Oh. There, there is so much salt in this in, in today's session. I, I feel like I'm floating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a very it's buoyant like, atmosphere it's, it's you've created with all this buoyant. salt. <laughs> this is the Dead Sea of actual plays. Um, like, I, if you're asking how old we all are, let me just say, thank Jared, you, Ross. That, Go ahead. That, that I'm I I am an ageless being. I yeah. was formed in unknown darkness before light yeah. was woven. I have walked this veil of tears for endless aeons immemorial. And uh, so, thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somewhere around there. <laughs> okay. 
All right, anybody else want to go with their exact age? Don't pull the bullshit rosters pulled. No, I'm just saying, I think age is a construct. I don't believe in age. We'll never Uh, tell you. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe in it. I think, I think, you know, you're as old as you want to be. You can't say. I can't say because I don't believe in it. Okay, Okay, that's fair. I think we could find out your age online. See, the internet doesn't know how old I am, and I've never revealed it. No, so. the internet's a fucking lie, and I'll tell you why it's a lie. This is now, now, now you get me started. It says I'm five nine. I'm not five nine. I am not five nine. All right, I am. Mm-hmm. I am. I am a six foot one man. All right, are you not five nine? Absolutely. Not so. What do you mean? Are you? You saw me. You know me. Yeah, and right? I was pleasantly surprised that you were shorter than I thought. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo. Okay. 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 No, it's it's okay. It's okay. Own. You can no, own no. being a short king of. <laughs> no. Whatever, man. Oh, don't. Whatever, dude. Right. Cool. At least Enjoy the it. at least the internet's talking about your height. People are interested. That's yes. a, that's a purely good thing. <sighs> I just, it's just one of those things where it's like, how how can you say like John Boyega is like six foot and then you're saying like, I'm five nine. Hey, anyway. you know what, Abu? The people on the Glass Cannon Discord only talk about my weight. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you could be so tall that when people see you in person, people are literally like, ugh. <laughs> Which is what happens that's, to that's me. True. So right. I have a weird people Jack Skellington that. body. <laughs> People do that to me in the opposite direction. Yeah. Like, oh my <laughs> God, I didn't know you were so tiny. Oh my God, you're so small. Oh, look at you. Yeah, Josephine yeah. and I are sort of a vaudeville pair where like, yeah. yeah. I can, if, if if she ever wants to fight me, I can just hold her at arm's length while she impotently takes <laughs> swings at me from four feet away. Yeah, and when we when we do the glass cannon traveling show, we're gonna have these guys as the tallest man and the smallest woman in the world, and they're gonna do a whole act where right. Ross holds Josephine in his the palm of his hand, and they sing a ditty together. Anything yeah. you can do, I can do better. <laughs> That's right, and we'll sell you patent medicines afterwards. <laughs> That's right. Well, people can never tell because we're on these shows, right? They're just That's seeing- true here or even when i'm in the studio like we're still at a table we're all seated and my torso is like an okay length yeah (laughs) so like (laughs) and people don't know that one of my hands is a grappling hook (laughs) oh yeah you got that you got that bionic um Mm -hmm. improvement it was by choice it was by choice it's a grappling hook hand in case i need to scale walls (laughs) yeah right just like the Bionic Commando, which now that I've revealed that I know the arcade game Bionic Commando, you should be able to discern my true age. <laughs> yes. uh, that's right. Uh, let's all give like a little hint toward our true age. I'll start the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, that's right. I'm the <laughs> age that hint? Lee Harvey Oswald was when he was shot. What's that? Ooh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm joking. You don't have to give a hint. It was just a joke. You don't have well, to give my, a hint. My, well, if I was going to give a hint, it would be Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> it says here on Wikipedia that Abu is 24. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Edited by Abu Salim. There you go. <laughs> He's six foot five. Five? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I remember... Someone, someone, like, I remember just reading that. Someone sent me, like, oh, dude, you're on, like, online because of all your, you know, cool stuff that you're doing on TV. And I'm like, ha, 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 very funny. And then I, like, looked at it and I was like, 5'9"? Are you serious? Who, who's the fool who said 5'9"? And I was I al- really just, anyway. I also love, sorry, not to completely sidetrack again, but speaking of the things on the internet, have you seen those ones that are, like, net worth of so-and-so? Oh, and they're stupid. all insane. Stupid. Stupid. So insane. And and mine are ridiculous. And they, they have are your dream. net worth. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's it's complete but like I don't know what it's going off of because I think my, I'm gonna I'm gonna mine's it right now. <laughs> that they have on there. And I'm like, I wish that I you know what? Yeah. They're always they're, and they're yep. these crazy ones, right? Like you're, three you're billion. Worth, dude, you're worth 15 million. This one says three billion. What Jared? What Jared Logan? Oh no! Sorry, I'm worth oh. three billion. Oh I, wow! I think. Oh no! Sorry, man, you're two hundred and fifty k. Sorry, I, I got that wrong. Uh, okay, well, 
I wish that was true. Okay. Okay. So, so J- Jared is a boomer. Josephine is a wealth criminal. <laughs> Abu is pocket sized. That's what and- it is. Oh, check it out. Um, uh, the the remnant is currently worth no coin, but they are at tier two. Oh my god! Okay, okay great. Thanks. There we you go. See, right, you cheers, see what cheers. I'm doing yeah, there? I yeah, see I what see, you did. That, that, I'm transitioning us over to a thousand years ago. This was a <laughs> land of beauty and magic. Then came the cataclysm that blotted out the sun and ripped open the gates to the land of the dead. The city of Duskfall is a metropolis of factories and tenements surrounded by crackling lightning barriers. Outside the city is a wasteland of the ravening undead. Inside the city is a teeming hive of scum and villainy, intrigue and corruption. Life is cheap in a city ruled by death. The sun is gone. The only thing that shines in Duskfall are the blades. In the dark, 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 dark. Really logo, Q logo, Q <laughs> produced, written, and directed by Jared M. Logan. Q with some assistance by John Harper. Q <laughs> establishing shot of the city. Six towers. Day, but you couldn't tell. There's no sun here. And we uh, join uh, our friends, the Remnant. Uh, back in their sunken grotto beneath the streets of Six Towers. And we are going to give a brief recap because I'm not even sure what happened last episode. <laughs> the remnant were looking into the Gray Cloaks. The Gray Cloaks being a rival gang here in Six Towers. The Gray Cloaks are former blue coats who were perhaps framed for a crime and kicked out of the force. And so they have formed their own gang. They also have their own fighting pit. Uh, our characters were actually, what they were really trying to do is perhaps track down some nobility who were members of the, the Leviathan Hunters. And they heard that those types of people sometimes congregate in the fighting pits of the Grey Cloaks. So you went to kind of see if you could find a Leviathan hunter contact or a, a noble connected with them who had strayed off from uh, their neighborhood in White Crown or Brightstone and was kind of moving among the city's rabble in the fighting pits that are run by the Grey Cloaks. While you were there, in order to become allies with the Grey Cloaks, whom you already had a bad relationship with, you concocted a plan or at least at least Juliet and Valkos did to become pit fighters. <laughs> <clears throat> but that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. In order to really impress the Grey Cloaks and fix the whole match so that you could get a lot of coin, you guys fought each other. And then Valkos took a stab wound just to sell it. Meanwhile, our friend Ekphelia, nay Ophelia, nay Ekaprag Wodi, did find someone in the crowd who might be connected to the Leviathan Hunters, to the nobility, and that that particular agent who announced themselves as Eric asked the Remnant to spy on the Grey Cloaks. Now that you are allies with the Grey Cloaks, by the way, your your scheme, your pit fighting scheme was wildly successful and the Grey Cloaks went from a negative relationship to a plus one positive relationship. So after you established that relationship, Eric came to Ekphelia and said, can you spy on them for us? Can you find out who they're associating with and what their current goals are? You guys went back to the Grey Cloaks, you talked to them and their leader, Nessa, and you found out a lot about them, but you you decided that you're not going to just spy on them and take the coin. You're gonna screw over the Leviathan Hunters. You're gonna screw over Eric and his crew by feeding them false information. Is that correct? Yes. Do I have that right? You yeah. do. And the main thing that you discovered from Nessa once you really had her trust was that the Grey Cloaks had been framed for destroying evidence against a Leviathan hunter and a noble named Lord Strangford. 
and you <laughs> think that Eric might be Strangford's agent, or maybe you're positive of it. Either way, I can tell you now as your GM, that's it's a pretty good chance that that's true. <laughs> so, I want to know exactly what you're trying to do to the Leviathan Hunters, and you can discuss it in character, or just tell me. Actually, let's just, just tell me for right now. Exactly what are you trying to do, because there should be a score maybe in the offing here. I feel like taking <laughs> on a target like the Leviathan Hunters, they are tier five. Uh, that's, that's the highest tier they can be. And even though your, your crew in the last episode leveled up to tier two weak, you, uh, you would have trouble taking them on in any kind of major way. So here's a question. Yes. Is it possible to knock people down a tier? What an interesting question. I'd say it's certainly possible. In in some way, it has to be possible. However, it would be very hard to do that if they were a much higher tier than you. However, what are the what tier is the Grey Cloaks? The Grey Cloaks are the same tier as you now. They are tier two. Interesting. So, I'm technically, us combined <laughs> makes tier four, right? <laughs> well... I don't think that it exactly works that way. <laughs> <laughs> two plus two equals four, though, man. Come on. Just to, just to review how it does work. If you are a tier two yeah. character from a tier two crew, and you're fighting, say, a tier three opponent, you're going to have less effect against that opponent. Or I might rule as the GM, and this might be my own spin, but I might rule that attacking them or dealing with them is riskier maybe it's desperate instead of risky but i would say that definitely you're generally going to have less effect at someone a tier higher than you and if they're two tiers higher than you you can't really do anything to them at all unless you do other actions intended to kind of even you up somehow you exploit a weakness you bring yeah. uh, you bring uh, um, more numbers against them you know, it's like scale, quality, and- Yeah, we did it a lot last yeah. season. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially, especially towards when, the end. Yeah, when we were in that other city, you know, and it was like very high tier stuff around us, we'd have to like get higher quality stuff or like, you know, use items to like make our tier sort of match a little more. Yeah, so it seems pretty clear that we <clears throat> want to strike a blow against the Leviathan Hunters. And yeah. I know yeah. it seems that it seems that that the uh, the sabotage or destruction of material that the Spark Rites and Unifaros did see last season that took <laughs> the life of Ophelia and and caused um, Juliette Bel Belrose to become the widow um, is connected with the Leviathan. It seems as though the Leviathan yeah. members have done a similar thing to the Grey Cloaks. And, um, and this is all an attempt to kind of consolidate their power at the expense of others. So I yeah. feel like I would, I'm curious, what is, what, what is our goal? What, what do we precisely want to, yeah. so, how, what, what kind of blow do we want great to Great recap, strike? great questions, Ross Bright. <clears throat> I think what we need is to find evidence against them and so i i think it's going to be more of like a social fight as opposed to like attacking you know attacking them head-on is not a great plan as has been you know laid out just by the tier difference but i think it's finding evidence that they are stopping other sort of fuel alternatives from being researched because that's what we're suspecting is that they had a hand in the whole accident with the spark rights. And right, the everything. spark rights. The spark rights, specifically Ophelia herself and and our friend Juliette, had perhaps discovered a alternate fuel source to the mm -hmm. Leviathan blood, and that is when they suffered their accident. We know that yeah. Unaferos refused to investigate the accident. Unaferos refused, sort of covered up the accident, mm -hmm. and that's why she was the first target in your vengeance quest. Now, she, was, she was in charge of the cover-up, but I think Ophelia is now beginning to believe that it was the Leviathan Hunters who actually mm -hmm. executed the sabotage. Yeah, it makes least, total sense. It yeah. makes total sense because so, they would not want an alternate fuel source in Duskfall. Mm -hmm. So then could we use the fact that they are looking for information on the Grey Cloaks 
to plant this information you know like almost like it is almost like a sabotage or like a uh like i, I guess it's we want to we want to we want to plant them or put them in a position where they can be Catch caught them. red-handed yeah yes and like <clears throat> I, I think see. you know they are like find out information of who they're working with what they're trying to do if we say you know if we work with the gray cloaks in figuring out essentially being like yeah you guys are trying to make an alternative fuel source however at this location go on i will say um, how much evidence do we need and who are we showing it to? Who is not corrupt in this city and are we just taking care of it ourselves type of thing? Great questions, great questions. Um, yeah, because like dis- <laughs> um, ruining their reputation doesn't really do much if they're still the only source of power in the city. Um, but I feel Ophelia, where Ophelia is at, Ophelia is less in the business of destroying reputations. She's in the business of annihilating people. <laughs> and um, yeah. I think she would be more interested, not not so much in destroying the reputation, but learning exactly who is responsible. Yes, I and, agree there. And, and pulling an Unaferos on them. Like, yep. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. I think getting some actual tangible like <clears throat> revenge on whoever, yeah, did it that way we have some leverage when communicating with them in the future. That's well. a personal thing, but yeah, and personal, it might improve yeah. and, and maybe less of a um, profitable venture, but it would I'd- perhaps shore up our allegiance with our n- new best friends for life, the Grey Cloaks. Yeah, and like strengthens our reputation and sort of builds our power up, which I think is what we got to build our power up to really take them on head on. I think taking out individuals within perhaps in a setting where they're not in their like headquarters or wherever, but where they're out at some I don't know, Leviathan party or like social gathering where they, I don't know. So it sounds like what we're, if if this is the, and I don't want to force it if people have other ideas, it sounds like we're moving towards like the goal of a targeted assassination or something like that. I think we need the information of who did it first, right? I like like that once assassination was said, all of a sudden Abu perked up. Yes. Yes. Right. So so that (laughs) would be, I guess, the information we'd need to gather to proceed that score would be who the May, yeah. who we're going after in yeah. particular. Well, maybe this Lord Strangford is someone that we can get and get that, like the Great Cloaks would be happy. Mm-hmm. And then we could also get information out of him. Yeah. So that's more of a kidnapping or a, if we're getting information that way. It could be way. eventual death at the end. Or we're, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, maybe something like that. Okay, yeah. I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> I love it. Uh, okay. Uh, this is so. This is like um. This is like kidnapping, like that Getty kidnapping. It's we're going after. We're going after. We're trying to kidnap a very powerful person. You're trying to kidnap Lord Strangford. Although, <laughs> yeah, that although, look really yeah, I guess if we make it more Getty, Getty-ish, maybe we kidnap someone close to him. Great. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are the eyebrows going down, Jared? If we kidnap someone close to um, Lord Strangford. Uh, the eyebrows. The eyebrows <laughs> are doing this. We're, we're um, following the I, uh, eyebrow meter to see how deranged our plan is. One of my eyebrows is very arched right now, and the other is very low. Um, I, let me tell you something. I think that you can. I'm gonna, yes, and you can try whatever you like. <laughs> what, what's everybody's? What's everybody's stress at? It's mine is actually kind of high. I mean, I drained somebody, but I spent stress in our downtime. So uh, I'm at four. I am two away from basically another um, setback. Why are you um, stressed? Didn't you vice? Yeah, I thought you were too blessed to be stressed. What happened? No, I don't think I, I don't think I, I know I I helped, I assisted a lot during that. Yeah. Oh, oh, you assisted a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, like, okay. we, we like spending stress during downtime. During so our we, <laughs> information gathering. It is, yeah. it is what it is. You know, I mean, there may okay. not be a lot okay. of opportunity for our friend Valkos to resist consequences. And our friend Valkos may not be able to assist very much. Or, okay, so maybe, or maybe there's a step towards what we're working towards, which is like just finding someone else that the Leviathans interact with and making sure that we sort of like secure all the people around them to have like either some leverage on or some power over that way when we eventually do want to go after the leviathans it's a much easier 
Would you like to talk to any other NPCs about this? They might have some ideas of how to weaken the Leviathan hunters before you go directly at them. I love right. Because I'm going to yeah. tell you, as, t at a, yeah. as a tier five opponent, you're going to need to do this in in phases. Because yeah. if you just go at them head on trying to kidnap their leader or his wife, mm -hmm. you're going to... <laughs> You're going to be up against a very, very tough and like okay. And, and when you say and when you say phases, Jared, are you thinking multiple? These phases are multiple scores, or these phases are multiple pre-score <laughs> preparations? Do you know what I mean? I think that I think that it might be wise to do multiple scores as yeah. set up to the okay. ultimate target. Cool. Right. Just like Una Faros, remember? Exactly. Yep, you yep, did a yep, couple yep. things to her it's before true. you ever, yeah. True, Great. true, true. Uh, and you so, still don't know exactly who your target is yet. You just think Lord Strangford's the leader. He's the one spying on the Grey Cloaks. Right, here's a, right. Here's a, here's a pitch. Um, if what we're looking for is information, then maybe this is less of an assa our, our preliminary score is less of an <laughs> assassination and more of a theft. Like, what if we, like, could yeah. get... I mean... It's we were doing the Watergate break in, but good this time. We're um we're uh, planting, uh, I guess not recording devices, but stealing documents, stealing documentation, um, getting access to their files or something, so that we could see mm -hmm. build a paper trail. I can mm. tell you that that idea is potentially profitable as well because there are probably lots of people in. Duskfall who would want to see the Leviathan Hunters locked up documents. If you found something Ooh, interesting. If you okay. found something interesting. Great. But that's still like sneaking into Leviathan territory. Is that still going up to your fight? You know, like... Um, it's... It, 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 it's it's still tricky, but it's, it, it's you know, it's... It's less maybe... Less head-on, maybe? It's less yeah. head-on than kidnapping the leader's wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, all in due um, time. We'll, we'll, right. we'll all there. in due time. Oh, we're going to see it, I feel. We could but, also be... We could also sabotage their ships in some way, you know, while they're not there type of thing. I can tell I like you the... documents. I can tell you that the Grey Cloaks are really interested in getting evidence against Strangford because they think right. that that's why okay. they're... Wa right. they're Let's their, go that um, route. Okay. Their watch but, quarters was burned down. But and re they, getting ideas um, from NPCs, maybe we could arrange a little. I, I mean, we've got these two contacts. We've got, um, er, yes. I've got Eric, uh, yep. who is a who we believe is a um, a contact from right. the Leviathan Hunters that we've been. Yep. And we've also got Nessa of the Gray Cloaks. Mm -hmm. and both of those would be able to provide information in their own way. Yeah, I think, well, Nessa told us everything that she knows about Lord Strangford, but yeah, we didn't really ask outside of Lord Strangford, you know, just about the hunters, perhaps. Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk to, uh, let's talk to Nessa and the Grey Cloaks and see if we can get some more hot goss. Okay. Um, you can return to their burnt out wash station where they live in the kind of tunnels and, uh, basements underneath, or that's where they make their headquarters anyway. And, um... Uh, Nessa isn't there, but her second hutch is present. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> right. We, um... What is it? S well, thanks for agreeing to a meetup, Doc. We've, um... Been in... We've been in communication with Nessa and your lot. See if we can fetch some information about um, our uh, mutual nemesis. We want to uh, learn more about these sailors who ply the waves. And me and my associates here. would love to share some information so that we might be able to be better equipped if we were to, shall we say, filch some documentation that might contain information relevant to 
both of our causes. Yeah? I hear ya. Um, he lights a, a, a lamp. Uh, it's not an electroplasmic lamp. He actually does it with a little, uh, little match. Uh, and it flares up and gives his face a yellow glow down here in the watch station. And he says, Fire. Yes, so fire, fire, fire burn. Fire. Yes. Yeah. Let's, no. get to, let's get down to first principles. <laughs> uh, no, I'm saying the murder, the evidence we had against Strangford. A, a man was burned alive. A man was burned alive. And you're saying that this... That is Strangford what done it? You had evidence to that effect. And then they, uh, looks like put the sparks to your little operation as well. Well, we suspected that it was Strangford because the watchtower, the watch station was also burned. He's doing something with fire. He has access to something. The man who was murdered was a demonologist. They were trying to blame it on his connection to demons. That he had perhaps summoned or called on something he shouldn't have. Oh, terrible business, that. You never catch us messed up in any of that sort of work. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're just the ones... I know your reputation, and maybe you're the ones to handle something like this. Ah, uh, yes, we would be. We're very good at this kind of thing. However, we do need some... Monetary inspiration to fund our quests. I thought we were partners here. We're not hiring you. No, we can, what? We can, we can help you, you help us. And that is enough. However, tell me, the information that we gather, who would be um, interested to learning more? Who ah. could pay a pretty penny? Well, there's lots of people who would be interested. I could make some inquiries, but I can tell you that the politics of this city are tied in heavily with the demon blood supply. So there'd be very rich people who would be interested. Yes. Yes. Well, if you can ensure that we are are directed to the right person to give us the right financial benefits from this. We will ensure that we find the right information for you. I'll look up factions that have the enemy of the Leviathan Hunters in the rule book, says Hutch. Do we want to <laughs> find, um, we could always find someone after we get the documents too, right? Mm -hmm. To sell info to? Might be kind of yeah. fun, or is that against the rules to, you know, secure your coin after, but... I think that uh, what you're being told by Hutch is that there's definitely people who would be interested, yeah. so we just have to find uh, out who they are. Oh, I'm for almost... example, the Grinders would be interested. Grinders? You haven't even heard of them. Yeah. <laughs> but they would be interested. Um, there's definitely... Oh, the Ministry of Preservation would be interested. He names those off just just for starters. Okay. Um, I am also kind of wondering if I know she's a rival, but if we could like, but having information or knowing that it's out there is also worth something. I've got this new rival who's a blood dealer, you know? Right. Uh, do you want to talk to your rival about this? No, no, not yet. I'm just in the future. As a blood dealer, she would definitely know about demon blood, and that's the Leviathan stock and trade, the Leviathan yeah. hunter stock and trade. Mm -hmm. I, I I think she'd screw us though. Personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd rather talk to her once we've already <laughs> got, got stuff. the information. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so what kind of what kind of score would that be? Yeah, it it's interesting, right? So you're trying to find, you're trying to get in and steal incriminating evidence against the Leviathan hunters. Is that yes. right? Some mm -hmm. sort of secret of the Leviathan Hunters. Yes. I think we should stop fucking around and decide our approach and our detail 
now because okay. that's how blades in the dark works okay you flash back to figure out the preparations you made ahead yeah. of time well we so, got a way in right so i would say that it's it's subterfuge or some form of like you know the fact that we you know we have someone who you know eric who's our who's our who's our way in so i think that's that is a Probably. Subterfuge seems like the way to go for for me. Yeah, right. We have a deception. Uh, a deception can be the approach. Yeah, there, that there's right. also social, which can be the the approach. And let me okay. just say, for your detail for social, you need the social connection. You have that. It's Eric. That's right. Okay. For your de- for a deception, you need the method of deception. How are you tricking them? So mm-hmm. it may be social because social you already be have. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's social. Let's go social then. Okay. And so uh, I think that uh, I'm going to... Uh, you've been communicating with Eric via covert drops. And Correct. Eric is expecting, perhaps from you, information on the Grey Cloaks. Mm-hmm. Which we would have gathered because we've shared with Nessa essentially the information, like, you know, what's going on. And we asked her to give us some fake information but that looks legit. So this is pre-planned so we've got some information okay um you didn't acquire well let's see you, i don't know if i would make you acquire an asset to have fake information it seems fake information would be pretty easy to just kind of put together on your own and make some things up we'll find out what that fake information was possibly in a little bit but let us start with you in a social situation with Eric, the covert drops have been going back and forth, but you want more access to the Leviathan Hunters. Am I correct mm. about that? That's yeah. right. So let's go ahead and put you all at a party in Brightstone. <laughs> okay, and just, just I'm, 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 I'm sometimes unclear. So this is the score. We are going to, the party is We're doing is it, it now. There's yeah, been, enough, we're there's in been it. enough talk. I'm pushing we're you, kicking and it. screaming into the score. Use your flashbacks in order we, to. Uh-huh. <clears throat> we've been to Brightstone before. We did a score here. This is that like nice area of town, right? Isn't this, wasn't this like. Is this where we had where our that, art that show? Lady? <laughs> um, that was actually the Childermass estate in White Crown. This is the first time you've gone to Brightstone, but it is, oh. um, it's, uh, it's a little, it's a little similar to uh, White Crown. I can tell you a little bit about Brightstone. It is a high money area. It's the home of too many of the wealthiest and most influential citizens of Duskfall. Its streets are broad and paved under bright electric lights. Its canals are sparkling and clean with perfumed water. Its houses are all of fine, pale marble blocks and rich timbers. And uh, right now, you are in a section of Brightstone uh, near the silver market and um, you are actually at the the party is the opening of a new business a new business okay. here in Brightstone and that's why it's connected to the silver market it is a emporium of electroplasmic goods mm. meaning uh, devices that operate on electroplasm only citizens of Brightstone or White Crown would have enough money to coin to throw around to buy a lot of these things because there are like personal electroplasm driven vehicles here. There are, uh, uh, yes, there are like electroplasm um, beauty regimens. There are electroplasm (laughs) uh, devices to make, (laughs) to make like cooking or, or refrigeration easier. And uh, we're going to call this, we're going to give this place a name. But right now you're walking in and you haven't quite seen the new sign over the door. And you can see people milling about and looking at the goods. And there's also hors d'oeuvres and wine. And I'm going to go ahead and say it's time for the engagement roll. Let's see if you got. So let's see. You've got uh, a good connection. You start with one die. You've got a good connection with Eric, you have uh, an asset. You have false information that you've been planting toward Eric. I think that's good. However, your target is way higher tier than you. So I'm taking a die away. I should really take more than one, but I'm gonna let you have two dice for this. Are you ready for the engagement roll? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. If it's one to three, you are in a desperate situation. If it's four or five, you're in a risky situation. If it's six, you're in... Uh, and the highest roll is a four. You are in a risky situation. So Sounds about right. Yeah, by risky situation, I'm going to say you are a stranger to a lot of these people. And even though you have done your best to dress appropriately, they are kind of eyeing you warily. You are outsiders here, and you have been noticed to be outsiders here. And that may affect uh, your effect uh, on uh, subsequent roles. You uh, finally see someone who uh, you think might be Eric and Ekaprag, you're really, you're kind of going on. Uh, uh, Eric was kind of masked up, but you're kind of going mm-hmm. on what's visible uh, and the, the sound of his voice. Okay. So, is, remember is your you? goal. Your goal is to get deeper into the Leviathan Hunters, to get deeper into their workings. Probably you're going to try to leverage Eric here to take you to a Leviathan Hunter site. Or, That's right. yes, okay. Mm-hmm. Open up the relationship. Um, it, can I preface that I am also wearing things that cover my face a bit? Sure, you can preface that. You, yeah, you can dress however you want. So, uh, Ophelia enters and immediately clocks someone who might be Eric. Then Juliette en- enters and Juliette is veiled. No, no, you know what? She hasn't been wearing the veil since prison. Since prison. Well, what's covering her face? No veil. Um, let's say we have like a scarf maybe. And I mean, literally like she might even have, I think some sunglasses. Like just okay. at the tip of, even though there's no sun, let's just, it's a fashion statement. I no, suppose. I know dark, dark glasses. Yeah. People here wear them. So not suspicious at all. Valchos, <laughs> describe your entry into the, into the grand opening of this, oh, uh, of this I'm, new emporium. I am sort of, again, big stature, going to attract attention. So I'm essentially wearing, you know, decent enough clothing but look like a bodyguard and I kind of mm. walk very closely behind um, Juliet uh, kind of you know not necessarily looking around like as if I'm pretending to be a bodyguard because I don't know what a bodyguard is so but I'm just you know I'm I'm there I'm an imposing I'm an imposing figure making someone look important in front of me oh, yeah. all right so you've all entered Blackford's <clears throat> Emporium Blackford's Emporium which is like a, a, a warehouse that's been turned into this sort of sales floor of all these different electroplasmic inventions that uh, could only be afforded by the wealthy and elite of Duskfall. And um, you see Eric, someone who's possibly Eric, speaking to uh, several other gentlemen who are all uh, smoking cigars and they're looking at an enormous like robot with like a electroplasmic battery uh, sticking mm-hmm. out of its chest and uh, there is an entire sign signboard beside it explaining how it can do agricultural labor or construction for the home things like that and and I think I'm going to stick behind Ophelia I feel like we would stick together at least to, to start this I think if we're, I mean, if the cover story is almost that we're like, if, if Valkus is a bodyguard, then I feel right. like it's almost like Ekphelia Ek- and, and Juliet are a couple. Agreed. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. I, yeah. and I think okay. it's like an arm in arm. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I'm just, and, and Ekphelia is like just re- relishing the delicious uh, proximity here and occasionally <laughs> casting a little glance back at Valkos like, mm-hmm. And, uh, and moving through the crowd and yes if if I in ears pricked up to hear the familiar voice of Eric yes. is that him you see him it is truly a new era and oh. the Leviathan hunters will not falter in their support of changing the face of the city one day constructs like this here they'll make our lives easy effortless. They'll do all of the labor for us. 
but they won't hunt, hunt the big worms out in the ocean. No. For that, you need a human intuition. And uh, I just want to... I feel like we, we're, we've we been communicating in cover drops, almost never meeting in person. That's but right. I think I would just like to go in and... Uh, catch the eye of this of this person you catch his eye and his eye just almost imperceptibly goes wide for a second mm-hmm. he just definitely little, didn't expect bow. to see you here mm-hmm. and I will peel off and go to a more private if there is such a place corner of this space very good he over by some uh, some um Electroplasmic refrigeration units. I like yes. it cold. Ekphelia having peeled off, I can tell Valkos and Juliet that they can hear Eric making his departure from the group he is talking to. Well, gentlemen, I hope you find something to your liking here. And I would love it if Juliet and Valkos tell me what they're doing, even if it's just kind of waiting to see how the conversation with Ekphelia pans out. I think yeah, I think it's a it's a wait, but also like I think we would position ourselves nearby just in case. Yes. I, yeah, so we, yeah. I'm gonna look like I'm browsing wares, you know, mm. looking at things, interest and, and also with the idea of kind of trying to hear if there's any bits of information anyway, since everyone's talking about this technology and just things that I can pick up on that might be interesting or point us in a different direction as well. Okay. What action are you going to use to perhaps hear some interesting gossip or information that might be useful? Survey? That sounds good. I'm going to say that because you stand out a little bit here, that this is going to be risky. Meaning if people notice you surveying them, there might be a problem. Um, And it will be for standard effect. You will get some little bit of information that pertains to this score if you succeed. If you fail, then uh, the, the, the threat is that you will be kicked out or suddenly have the attention you don't want on you. Okay. Shit. Rolling. Oh, no. Double ones. Oh, oh dear. Great start today. <laughs> you can you know resist. What? I can resist. I could resist. But what's the... Double let's ones. see this consequence. Well, it's straight uh, up failed. A man in a very loud jacket and a bowler hat uh, begins moving toward you and says, And excuse me, ma'am, is there something I can help you with? I was just trying to see uh, what the most popular items are today on display. The most popular items? Yes, I just want to know what is um, up and coming. I'm here like everyone else. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not good at talking. Um, <laughs> just another Spycraft. Just another rich. I'm a normal person. Lady <laughs> looking for good. I'm here like everyone else. <laughs> I exist. <laughs> Can I? I I will resist. I'm not a bad guy. I I'm a like good I, man. <laughs> I'm gonna resist, but I am so bad at talking. Juliet isn't great at socials. Um, You're gonna resist the attention that this man is giving you. I'm gonna resist, but I think in RP, Valkos, you gotta help me out in some way. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I come up and I'm like, is there a problem? <laughs> no problem at all. I was just wondering what Madam would perhaps like to peruse. I'm here to guide and inform our oh. customers. By the way, what family are you from? Are you now now me? would be the time to resist if you're going to resist. Yeah, I'm going to resist. I'm going to resist, and then can you help me with my like academic background? Pull out a family name. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. So, what should I use to resist? You should use, I'd say, what is this? Re- res- uh, is res- it? Would it be resolve? Yeah, it would be resolve. Yeah. It wouldn't be like insight, maybe. Okay. Oh, we'll study. Yeah, I'll allow insight. I will. That I think that makes more sense actually. Okay. So I, I just hit insight and roll my that stat. 
Or do yes. I need to? Yes. So okay. to resist, you're taking six stress minus the minus highest I, roll okay. from your insight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. How'd I'm you do? Taking three stress because I rolled a three. You're taking three stress, <laughs> and you immediately pull out the uh, family name Sunder. I am from the Sunder family, of course. Ah, yes, yes. I've heard that your uh, photomorphic farms are doing well this season. Yes, you know, but there is always room for improvement. Well, let me show you some of our agricultural innovations. Lovely. Meanwhile, exactly what are you doing here? I need you to understand love, that I would not be here if it weren't in your best interests and of the direst urgency. There are matters of of schedule, schedule when um when we make our little uh, transfers and drop-offs. I do not have the luxury of time. Your organization has been compromised, sir. In what way? I mean to say that I have learned that just as you have someone on the inside with your, um, your nemeses, these former sharpers of the town, they've got someone in your organization as well. Not just someone, some ones. They know things that they shouldn't. You need to clean house. You've got a mole. And how are you sure of this? I'm sure of it, darling, because I've, I've, I've seen, I've seen them doing their little trade-offs. I've seen them come back, give their information back to Nessa, Hatch, and the whole lot. I've seen it. I don't know their name, but I know, I'd know I'm on sight. Describe them to me. Oh, certainly I can describe them. They ch- you know how these how these people are. They can, they've moved in undercover circles. I dare say he changes his look every other day, and they're moving. They're moving different people in and out of your organization, clerical positions, factotums, all up and down your chain of command. I should say, for sailors, you've got some very leaky ships. <laughs> what action are you using? Um. <laughs> Uh, I am using, uh, this is, I am, of course, lying, and the action would be, as I pull up the character sheet to see, is sway, of course. (laughs) Sway. Okay, this is, I think that this is a very risky sway. Is it a desperate sway? No, it's not quite desperate yet. It's not quite desperate, because I think, I think it's an excellent lie. Um, it's the kind of thing that plays on their paranoia. So I'm going to say it's risky for right now. And if you succeed, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you standard effect, not great effect yet. Okay. What? Yeah. Yes, about I was going to say, you can read minds, right? Uh huh. Oh yeah. Surely the, the trigger of them having a mole, maybe if you, read their mind you could get an idea of who they might suspect and then play into that but i don't know how much stress you'd get out of that oh well yeah i'm i'm (laughs) of course i'm i'm getting ready to to probe um (laughs) right would you like to push for uh a greater effect because right now they're not going to take you back to just look over all of of their staff but if you had a great result they might to push for greater effect. Um, you could push, or I could give you a devil's bargain in order to get greater effect. Well, uh, how's about... Um, can, also, can he also trade, make it desperate for great effect? He could, but that means I have to have a big consequence if it yeah. fails. Right. Um, options, options. Yeah, um... Here's a pitch can i take a flashback i think it's a great idea um this isn't i'm not actually isn't riffing this they've come up with this plan um and i think i would like to have worked with 
Hutch to um, send one of their low level um, like someone who's maybe trying to like uh, work their way into the Grey Cloaks or something to have actually done this um, they're being set up as an, someone being set up as a fall guy to actually yeah. go in a Grey Cloaks associate has really gone and set themselves up as a <laughs> mole in the low levels of the uh, Leviathan Hunter hierarchy. Is that not what you're telling me? Not, 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 even, not even high levels. Not even a real mole. They're just like... They're, do you understand? I hope this isn't too... No, no, no. I'm just saying a Grey crazy. Cloaks associate has gotten hired by the Leviathan Correct. Hunters. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and just, I don't think uh, which that I'm, that's Which I'm doing nuts. to make this lie more plausible. Right. Um, Basically, I'm offering them up. This is just another piece of false information that I'm giving them, so yeah. that they they can have like uh, someone to burn. Literally, yeah. it seems when uh, we give them up. So the idea there's more than just one, mm -hmm. right? That you mentioned, yeah. Flashback. You're giving this Grey Cloaks associate his his orders as he's about to go off and insinuate himself into the insinuate himself into the Leviathan Hunters. You're in the sure. burned out watchtower. I want to see the flashback. Great. Um, I am totally sending this person to their death. So uh, this is... Uh, um, um. <laughs> and what do I do when I get there? Will you just be your charming self? You... I need you to be completely loyal. Uh, just, just as your natural inclination commands you I'm sure um, they ask you to jump you ask how high um, but I want you asking questions of course always asking questions it's, not, it's only by asking questions that you learn the rigors of a particular profession and I think by being a well informed employee you can be the best employee and then of course once you're well and insinuated you will be activated so to speak you understand excellent you can count on Dell crofty been wanting to get my fingers around these sailors throats for a while so i'll go and get myself on a ship and from there aye aye captain if you get my meaning. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, at ease, seaman. Go on your way. <laughs> that is, um, is it an elaborate flashback? I'm going to say that's a flashback worth two stress. You got it, dude. Yikes. Okay. Closing in. Okay, here <laughs> comes the sway. But does this get me more effect? Uh uh, I think that it absolutely does because you are now able to mention the specific person, one of the specific moles. That's right. Right. That's right. Um, I will. Uh, so risky for now. Great. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I'm just good. Hold on. Let me just give you my luck. There you go, man. Thank, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> there That's we right. go. There you go. Here we go. Mm. Five. Whew. Yeah. Success. Take it. Mm -hmm. With a consequence. And we will find out what that consequence is when we come back after a short break. This is Haunted City on the Glass Cannon Note. Hey, Nash, taking a quick break here to tell you about Dauntless Snacks. The owner of Dauntless Snacks has been kind enough to sponsor us here on Haunted City, and we are so Grateful. What is Dauntless Snacks? Well, it's a company that is dedicated to supporting streamers, gamers, dreamers, and creators all over the world and America and Los Angeles, where I live. And Dauntless Snacks is a delicious protein filled snack that you can eat whenever. You need it, okay? We're talking about a 100% grass-fed beef stick that doesn't have all that greasy residue of the competitor brands. And get this, 1% of all of Dauntless Snacks 2023 sales are going to go to the Children's Hospital of Colorado. That's 1% of sales, not profits. Are you kidding me? So you have got to go and check out Dauntless Snacks. And the way to do that is to go to Dauntless Snacks. Dot com. There's probably a www before that. 
and then dauntlesssnacks.com. Go and buy some of these beef sticks. They've got mango habanero coming soon. They've got teriyaki coming soon. The flavors will explode on your tongue. Go and check it out. That's Dauntless Snacks, and we want to thank them for being our sponsor. And we're back, and the Remnant has just convinced an agent of the Leviathan Hunters that they have a mole in their organization, but our friend Ekaprag rolled a five, right? So it was a That's success right. with a consequence. The consequence is I'm making a clock, and the <laughs> clock is going to be called uh, the Jig is Up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that means that uh, actions that make our friend Eric more suspicious are going to tick off segments of this clock, and I'm going to go ahead and tick off one to kind of let you know that this is dangerous. You are right now. You've convinced him. You were successful, but there's just the, the sliver of doubt in his mind. So, the jig is up is the name of the clock. And I will go ahead and take a piece off of it. And how many segments have we got left? Uh, yeah, what kind of segment clock are we looking at here? We're looking at six, because I thought that the okay. lie was, I thought the lie was pretty great in the flashback okay. backing it up. So you have, you have five segments left. And uh, Eric says, I know the man you speak of. New to the De organization, yes? Del something. Yes. Del Crofty. Yes, that's the one. But he's not the only. Meet me on the crucifix in an hour. The crucifix is Lord Strangford's enormous Leviathan hunting ship. Oh boy. As you wish. Uh, was that? I assume that invitation is. I must, of course, bring my trusted associates. Of course, you should. Yeah. We're going to get to the bottom of this little sabotage operation together. Oh fuck. I know. Oh my god. Okay, this is scary. Okay, great. But discretion, um, discretion, Eric. You don't know who to trust in your own house. Keep your eyes open. Don't presume to tell me about discretion. An hour. <laughs> and he's off. Okay. Okay. We, yeah. We let's come, do this. Yeah. I think. Um, uh, can we like uh, we meet up like outside of this market once we like, and look of to Exilia once, you know, like the nod of like, are we good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. And so we step out of this space. <laughs> okay, you're uh, you're out of Blackford's Emporium, and let's go ahead and take you an hour later to the docks. And you were looking at the crucifix. It's the jewel of the fleet. Each Leviathan hunting ship was funded and built by a family. What were you about to say, Josephine? Well, we haven't done this in a while. Should we have picked our loadout? Uh, we forgot to pick our loadout, and now we will pick it. Keep in mind it was a social score. <laughs> yeah, I've already selected light. Light? Oh, yeah. you did? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'm, I'm going to... You're gone. Sorry, Justine. I'll go normal. It's what I generally. Yeah, I think I've gone normal because I'm a bodyguard. Very good. So you are approaching with two normal and one light loadout. 
And as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by the rules. <laughs> you know, these okay. games would these games would be perfect if not for all the rules. All right, so. Uh, each ship is funded and built by a specific noble family. And the Strangford family have the largest and most imposing ship. It's currently docked at uh, here in the docks section of Duskfall, and it is massive. It is like an aircraft carrier. And you can see why it they call it the Crucifix, because it even has two like long arms that come out on either side of it. And you can see, you know, Hundreds of little windows. You can see apparatus mounted on it that look like maybe like giant harpoon guns, but like in like, what do they call it like a rampart or like a like like many of them like shoot out at once, like at a giant bar of this kind of weaponry. Mm. The whole thing towers over you like a castle, and there is a huge broad gangplank that is connected with various machinery and apparatus to the metal dock that you are on. When you approach, a sailor, who also appears to be on guard duty, says, The Remnant? That's us. Yes. Eric is waiting for you in the boiler room. After you. will sweep down there, I suppose. Mm. Mm -hmm. as, but as you do, though, I'm gonna peel off and do oh a my bit of looking God. around. Already. Okay. Very good. <laughs> you're, you're so happy. <laughs> All according to plan. Yeah. Um, no need to roll as any discussed. action yet, Valkos, but can you tell me generally where you're going? So the guard has given directions to the boiler room uh, which uh, is, you know, in the bowels of the ship. Where is Valkos headed? I think I, I'm heading towards like the main. I think I'm I'm, I'm looking for quarters, essentially, uh, for like any sort of uh, quarters where they would hold men, women, children. You know, if, I'm I'm trying to get a lay of the land of like where people would would stay. You're looking for where, yeah, where the sailors sleep or where mm. the, maybe the captain sleeps, that kind mm. of thing, right? Mm. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Tell me how you would find that section of the ship. Here's the threat. If you fail at this role, you're going to be a little bit lost in this enormous ship and that yeah. can cause problems for you. So yeah. tell me how you would find it. I think I would be looking to see... I mean, are there, is there, are there many people on the ship at the moment? Are people moving around on the ship at the moment? Yes, the ship is busy. Yeah. There are people perhaps preparing it. Uh, you're not sure because you're not a sailor. Either they are powering it down, like, you know, putting it into dock for a little while, or they're getting it ready. You're not quite sure, but there's a lot of people about they're moving stuff onto hooks or off of hooks. They're you know, taking big tow lines and connecting them to things. There's people everywhere. Great. And is there, do they have like name badges or anything like that to kind of associate themselves to this space? A fair question, but they do not identify themselves with a badge. They do have insignia that let you know their rank. Mm. Oddly enough, on a Leviathan Hunter ship, uh, it's not quite as... Uh, romantic as say the 19th century ships of our history here on earth leviathan hunter sailors wear sort of like a a more dystopian kind of coverall kind of like <laughs> work suit yeah and uh they're uh instead of epaulettes and little you know insignia they just have black bars on the front of them that let you know what you know, level they are at in terms of their rank then I'm going to check off one of my uh, loadouts. And uh, essentially, I say I came in as a bodyguard. I had this big, co you know, this big coat or cloak or whatever I was wearing. I take it off. And what you see myself in is a sailor outfit. Uh, I think it would be 
easy enough to get one, but I think you need you owe me one stress because that's a okay. flashback. Okay, that's a flashback. Unless what what Got is it? it? It doesn't say disguise. What does it say on your sheet? A subterfuge supplies. So subterfuge supplies. But yeah. I think if you click on subterfuge supplies, it will tell you exactly what kind of subterfuge supplies yeah, you have. Yeah, theatrical makeup set. <laughs> Selection of blank documents ready for the costume, jewelry, a reversible cloak, and distinctive hat. A forged badge of office. Okay. okay. If you would rather not take the stress and you just want to use the subterfuge supplies, I think that you can have like a visitor's badge or like a, <laughs> it, it's like a, it's like a, um, a credential that lets you onto the ship. Mm -hmm. And you see a couple people going by who aren't in sailors fatigues. They are like wearing these things and they look like maybe academic types or, I'm you taking know, the stress. <laughs> okay. You take like, the stress for a brief, uh, a brief flashback that I will not completely role play through. Yeah. And here's the flashback. That'll be so many coins, Gov. And you hand them over, Ooh. and then they push a, uh, a sailor's onesie to you. Great. And I've got, I've got my, I've got my sailor's onesie. But I will take off um, actually the uh, subterfuge. Um, uh, supplies, however, as well, because I want a forged badge of office, so like a, an actual. So, it, so the you know, as you say, like the ranking, I yeah. want it to be quite not high but medium. You know, so medium. it's like a, I, I love this. So yeah, you got like a grunt's uniform, and then you have like you've specially forged a patch that you just slap over it. Oh, mm. look at that! You're a lieutenant now. <laughs> You're an officer now. That's the plan. Okay, great. And now we go back to you telling me what action you're using to find the living quarters. Right. Um, I am. <laughs> I think I am prowling because I'm moving around unseen, or you know, just blending in with the with the with the crowds. I agree. Please roll a prowl. This will be. It's not too scary yet. This will be for now controlled for standard effect. You will find the living quarters. Okay. Six. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's that luck. The Valkos <laughs> luck. The threat was that you were going to get lost. You don't get lost at all. With a six, I can tell you that you know where to go toward the officer's living quarters, including the captain's berth, or you can go toward the crew berths, which are many and numerous and on a different floor of the ship. I'm going to go... And my badge is specific. Is, it it officer. says officer. Officer. Yeah, lieutenant. Lieutenant. Yeah. Yes. I'll go. I'll go towards the captain's space. That makes sense. So Valkos is moving about the corridors of the ship, and in fact, as you move toward the captain's berth, uh, one of the crewmen goes, "Sir," toward you, uh, and moves by. <laughs> right. I just kind of go, "As you are." And keep Meanwhile, going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the boiler room is sort of a misleading. Uh, nomen for the actual chamber that uh, Juliet and Ecphelia enter. It is an enormous, gigantic space with an, a, a boiler the size of a house. And uh, the heat emanating from this thing is tremendous. Like, it is, it, 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 you know how when you get really close to a campfire, like you're like, ow, that's burning my skin. I need to get back a little bit. Well, being even in this, you know, gymnasium sized space with like a house sized boiler in the middle, like you think that the people who work here work under horrifying conditions. There are piles of a uh, crystalline or mineral fuel that gets poured into the boiler. Uh, there are also electroplasm tanks that you think, uh, uh, have something to do with the ship's operation. But right now, of course, the ship is not moving, so nobody is operating this machinery right now. What you do see is Eric, several sailors, and Del Crofty tied to a chair. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Come in, <clears throat> come in. Ekaprag Wodi, yes? And, uh... This is the lovely Juliette Bell Rose. Where is your other associate? He's already gotten to work. Gotten to work? 
Oh, this better be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the cover story? I was like, as soon as you peeled off, I was like, what is the cover story? Well, <laughs> as- zipping up. We are um, here to help you find these moles amongst you. Are we not? Uh, I think we've found him, haven't we? And uh, Del Crofty, who uh, pushes his gag out for a second, he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you have <laughs> the first of our concerns, but there is more than one. This is why we said discretion is key. You still haven't asked, answered my question, Miss Bell Rose. Where is Valkos? I told you he is doing his work to find this right. other mole for you. You, uh, he's he's trying to find other moles. Is that what you're telling him? <laughs> yeah, I thought we had pitched this as there are multiple. Yeah. Was like in their yeah, and this guy's totally cool with you just sending one of your guys around his ship to round them up without his assistance. <laughs> you are on it. You're, you're definitely what on it today, are you Josephine. Using? I don't know what is going on with your speech today, but you're mm. like on it, man. <laughs> Look, what ac- Juliet's well, that's okay. never been good at the Juliet, at Juliet, well, she actually might be better than uh, Josephine, you know? <laughs> Who, it that's depends. very true. What action are you using? Um, I guess sway. Sway, okay. And uh, you're saying that Valkos is on the ship rounding up other double agents. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to call that a desperate action. <laughs> and okay. I'm, um. I'm going to say that it will be for uh, limited effect. Oh, man. The uh-huh. threat, the threat is that I'm gonna kick off, with a desperate action, I'm gonna kick off three of the the Jig Is Up segments if you That's fail if this. Right, okay. If you succeed with a consequence, I'm gonna kick off one. Uh, and um, and it's probably gonna lead to more, more trouble no matter what, because you have limited effect, right? Is there okay. something you like to do to get more effect? Uh, Remember, you have flashbacks available to you. You can get an assistance from Ekaprag to help your what, role. What kind of effect is this right now? It's limited. limited. I think that I have to assist. Assistance, how many stress do I take for assistance? I think it's one. Yes, it's one. You know, I, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reframe all this and forgive me. Because it's, it's also, desperate. Wait, let me finish. Because it's yeah. desperate, if you fail, the jig is just up. I, You know what I mean? Right. If you succeed with a consequence, I'm removing some segments, okay? And uh, no also, matter I what, sh- right now, he's not going to completely believe you because it's limited effect. Okay, I was being quiet before and there was a reason. I should be even more quiet. I have less <gasps> effect already because I'm terrified. I have harm. Okay, oh. so right now you have zero effect. <sighs> okay, uh, then I then I should better pipe up here. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, and I'll devil's bargain it too. Whatever. I'll, give I'll, me, I'll, give I will, me of course, assist. One take... thing at a time. Okay, so, yeah. uh, Ekphelia, you're assisting. Yes. Okay. So that'll get it to. How are one, you assisting? Um, to. Uh... Yes, for someone who knows the value of discretion. It seems as though several of your trusted men have already, already know the score. I think this might scare a few little rabbits out of their holes. Alcos is a very observant gentleman. He's moving about your ship, seeing if there's anyone that he recognizes before this little mole hunt goes so far that there's no way of keeping it under wraps. Okay. He'll be rejoining uh, us shortly. Okay. Uh, great. That's an assist, so you get an extra die. Okay. Take the stress. Oh, Take an extra stress. die. Oh, okay. But our effect is still at zero. Uh, that's correct. So how are you going to... You could push. You could take two stress to get a limited effect. And have trauma. I can't. I'd be out. <laughs> oh, really? Well, now. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm, 
Can I, instead of getting an extra die, can we have it go to effect or no? Is that not an option? Uh, instead of getting an extra die, can you assist for more effect? I don't remember right now the chat is telling us, but guess what, guys? <laughs> we exist weeks ago. I'm sorry I spoke. I forgot. God, I'm no, terrible at this. Great. No, no you're not good. terrible. No, no, you're not terrible. You asked the question. <laughs> and you asked the question. Forgot I'm terrified too. You know, it's so funny because it's all the way you frame things. Like you said, he's going to get the other moles, which is a little crazy that someone would be <laughs> like, hey, one of our guys just decided to walk around your headquarters, like finding somebody. <laughs> our friend, our friend, Ekphelia framed it as, He's looking for anybody else he recognizes, which it, that ha that makes a world of difference, doesn't it? It looks like assistance only gets you an extra die. I don't yep, see anything in there. It only about gets effects. you an extra die. Okay, well then, can I get a devil's bargain then? Because we got to get something to get it up from zero. The devil's bargain is you. Uh, the devil's bargain is you have to do something. Uh, God, devil's bargains are like. Hey, come up with a really creative solution right now. <laughs> um, Devil's bargain is you have to do something that absolutely gets him to trust you. You have to really hurt Del Crofty. Okay. And that will give you a limited effect. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, great. So, um, Go ahead and role play it for me, and then we'll roll. Okay. So, um... We are just as concerned as you are about these moles. Is this the one? And I will go up to to him and just, like, clock, clock him, just do... Just punch him in the face. I, I'll just try and break his nose. Okay. Um, what action would you use to do that? I would use skirmish. Let me have a quick skirmish roll controlled for standard yep. effect. Five. Mm, five. Right. You know. Uh, you smash him in the nose pretty hard, and he's like, what the? Why? Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, and uh, now you can have limited effect as you explain where Valkos is. Oh, my God. Okay, and so this was going back to a sway roll. Okay, sway roll. You have an extra die, remember? Did you have a bonus die. Desperate. Limited effect. Oh my god. This is. Extra die. Okay. Four. four. A, a two, a one. There's a four. a four. And a four. Success with a consequence. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that he buys that uh, Valkos is looking for uh, anyone who he whom he recognizes. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to rule that the consequence is that I take over another uh, another pie, another pie yeah. piece out of the yeah. clock. Makes and sense. Uh, that that said, he also says. Go find the Severosi and uh, send someone to uh, to find Valkos. Okay. Which is not great because Valkos is the one trying to find. I think your evidence right now. Okay. <laughs> so he goes. Um, Sorry. Shall we wait till he joins us? No, I don't think that will be necessary. Um. So this is the man you insist is spying on the Leviathan Hunters. Yes. Placed within your organization to feed information back to the Grey Cloaks. Well now, so far he's refused to admit it. Haven't you? I'm telling you, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm no mole. I promise. Well then, Let's apply a little pressure. And he <laughs> points to the sailors who go and they put these huge pokers into the blindingly white hot furnace. And when they pull their pokers out, they are white hot with heat. And they walk up to Del Crofty. And now Del Crofty is giving Ekphelia a look. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> now Eric is looking at Del Crofty and then looking at you. And <laughs> it they... seems, Mr. Crofty, that you better start becoming more forthcoming. Um, you want me to become forthcoming? Yes. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, this, was the, this was the plan. Like, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right. I mean, I, oh, yes. I have to remind you that 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 uh, um, uh, Del Crofty getting hurt uh, registers in Ophelia's moral compass. Yeah. Not at all. Okay, <laughs> so. of course. Uh, the, the 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 white hot poker is right here near his face, and he goes, "You're sure you want me to tell the truth?" God, he's an idiot, though. He's just going to say you sent him. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. It'll all go easier for you if Very you Very just... well. Uh, he sent me. Uh, Ekebreg. He <laughs> sent me to do this. It was all his plan. He made me He made me join the ship. Uh, he wanted me to, to, to ask questions. So he said, ask questions, Del. And uh, Eric Sad. says, hold. Sad, he, isn't it? We're going to see if Ekaprag can continue to lie his way through this uh, in a minute. But right now, we're going to see how our friend uh, Valkos is doing. Valkos, you have found Mm. your way to the captain's suite. Mm. Now, do I see any form of... uh, So when you say captain's suite, there is only one captain on this ship, isn't there? There is. You don't know whether he's here yet. You haven't heard any talk of Lord Strangford. No, so I'm going to be, um, oh, fuck. I, I'm going to look around, but instead of looking around, actually. Oh, in, you're not inside in, yet, my friend. There's oh, I'm a not inside. Big, sorry, I should have it, it described. There's a big, heavy oaken door with brass fittings. It says captain on the front of it. And, uh, just, uh, testing it a little bit. You see that it is locked. Keep in mind, the Leviathan Hunters are tier five. Okay. Okay. It's locked. That's fine. Um, So this is the suite. This is the area. So I know my way towards the suite. That's fine. Um, I've gathered that information. Um, It's locked. Tier five. I then begin. You know what? Can I... Do something just random. Could I? Is there like a, a doormat there underneath? The, Please like, do. Is, Let me see if there's a doormat. I don't know why, but there is. There's like a little. <laughs> there's like a little mat. Right. And uh, perhaps it is a tradition in Duskfall to put out like a little kind of welcome mat uh, <laughs> outside of any kind of place you call your, you know, your home. And if I look under it, is there a key? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't see my face right now it's sort of a mix between disbelief and disappointment come on man <laughs> oh. yeah is there a little rock nearby what happened to your <laughs> hand <laughs> uh, th- uh, you're right I'm abandoning it uh, I'm abandoning <laughs> yes and there is no key under the <laughs> The welcome map that is inside a ship. <laughs> okay, great. Um, all right, you know what? Worth a try. It's worth a try. <laughs> so I guess what I'm going to do then is if it's tier five, I'm looking at this door, I'm seeing the lock, I get an idea that I'm not going to be able to get through this. Um, but I know well, my way to... You're gone. Well, I, I, I don't want to lead you on, but, uh, you know, there may be some ways for you to... And, and by the way, if you want to go, you've thought of something else to do, go do it. But I think that there may be, I just want to let you know, it doesn't mean that it's an impossible barrier. There are ways that you can kind of get around something being a very high yeah. tier lock. I, I think I'm going to try and, I am going to try and, um, I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to tick off some more of my, um, my, uh, my gear here. And I'm going to use my burglary gear and use um, my finesse yeah. to pick the lock. 
a set yeah. of lock picks. Go for it. A set of lock picks, right? It uh, mm. is is part of the burglary gear. The problem is that this is a tier. Uh, it may not be a tier five lock. Let's call it a tier four lock. It's tier. It's two tiers above. So it's it's not that you can have you can have no effect right now. Yeah, okay. But, uh, wait, we know that your gear isn't your gear a little better than. Uh, yeah, it is. Because are, are we we upgraded our gear in the uh, in our um in our in our camp? Yeah, that, that's I'm, I'm true. Sure that's true, right? You guys all upgraded your gear. Let me let me let me double check. But I think that like at a certain point you said that you have higher quality gear. I think yes. that's what one of the things you chose for your crew. So that means you still have limited effect. And by limited effect, what does that mean for picking a lock? I think that it means you can get in with these these picks, but the problem is that you will either make a scene, make a loud noises, or you will damage the doors to where it is very clear that it is, um, yeah, the quality of your supplies, you upgraded it. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, you'll, you'll, you're gonna damage the door to where it's very obvious there's been a break-in. Okay. You know, while you're having a summit with the Leviathan Hunters over a mole, you're going to do that. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. Okay. Sorry. Let me have that finesse roll. It so is. So what's um, my position? We're gonna call it risky, for Limited. standard standard effect. You'll get in. Standard. Okay. Yeah. Fuck. Failed. How'd you do? Oh, you failed. One two one. Um. Here. The uh, door is damaged, and your lockpick is broken off inside, and it also doesn't open. And now I'm going to roll to see if the people that were sent to find you have found you. Oh, man. Okay. And right now, you uh, see them kind of looking around at the other end of the corridor. Let's hop back to the boiler room. Mm. In the boiler room, our friend... Uh, Eric uh, turns to you and is like, would you like to explain what our friend Dell is saying? Would I like to explain? Or maybe Miss Bell Rose? Well, it's just what he would say. Isn't it? He's trying to throw suspicions. This is a classic ruse. I'm not, I swear! He sent me! He, he said it was all part of an elaborate plot to make you think you had a mole! Oh my god, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> you told him to be forthcoming? <laughs> yes, oh I'm, my god. I'm sorry. This is the most incompetent guy you could have if, brought in here. Okay. If, um, <laughs> if we were going... If <laughs> someone was going to... If I was going to put a mole in your organization, don't you think... He would have a more plausible cover story than that. And, um... Can can I get a rundown of how many people are in this room? How yeah, many? let's find out. I, he, I he, made a know. he made a couple peel off to go find Valko, so... Yep. Right now, there are... Oh, let, let me see. I'm gonna see how many peeled off to go find Valkos. Okay, there are three people in addition to Eric. And, the, and, and Del. Okay. Okay. Uh, I feel like this is not going well. <laughs> okay. Well, it, 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 it is or it's not. This It feels like an action is coming up. I just yeah, need to know I mean, exactly I'm try what... He's trying to... He's asking, like, can you explain yourself? Yes, I want to sway him again to yeah. explain myself. Um. So that's... Uh, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna freaking go for it. Okay. Um, and can, and I, can I assist with my sort of, like, you know, the, this is a classic ruse uh, to try and throw suspicions. You can't be falling for this. Of course you can. And so I'm it's going to now stress. make this one. I'm going to make this one. Uh, I think things are getting tense. This one's desperate yeah, for, so for, I'm going to say, standard effect. If you okay. if you succeed, you, uh, you'll have allayed suspicions for now. If you fail, the threat is I'm going to take three pieces off of the clock. All right, so okay, I get one bonus die. dice for the assist, yep. and here we go. I Did it rolls? Uh, yep. Success. Yes, success a five. With a, a five. Success with a consequence. So I'm going to say that instead of taking three pieces off the clock, I'm only going to take one more off of the clock. Kay. The clock is now half empty. Oh boy. Okay. 
Um, haven't you ever, on these ships of yours, haven't you ever seen a rat when they're backed into a corner? They'll chew their own arm off to get out. I think it's pretty clear what's happening here. What we want you to do is not cast about. And here I might even try to take one of the pokers. Um, they hand it to you. Um, cast about for the most obvious and the most pathetic story. It's for you to start talking about who else is here with you. Who else did Nessa send here? Hmm? There is no one else. You know that. You only Why sent me. Why don't you use that tongue to tell the truth before I burn it out of your rat skull? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't... You didn't send anyone else that I'm aware of. I don't... There are no other gray cloaks here. I swear to God, please don't... Don't put a poker in my mouth, don't, please. <laughs> and though this entire scene is deeply disturbing to Ross Bryant, and I find all of this incredibly distasteful and horrific in the in the most terrible way, the the uh, the pleading and uh, begging of uh, this this man is music in the ears <laughs> of Ecphelia. Yeah, and, uh, Ekphelia, Ekphelia is a vampire. Ekphelia has a lot of trauma. Yes. Right? Uh, Ekphelia is is vicious. They have a rather sadistic streak. Oh. And so, yes, that, that poker is drawing ever closer. I have a wild idea. Oh, well. Oh, I wish you'd uh, tell me. Yeah, so... Eric is hanging back to see how this whole torture moment yeah. goes. Uh, yes. Um, and uh, yes, go ahead. It's not too crazy, but in, in my mind, this guy seems fucking useless for us. He's really messing this up. Um, can I... I would like to almost like a sleight of hand sort of way, like go up to assist Ekphelia. Um, but I want to make it look, you know, like people that are moles or whatever that are in, they have like those like pills they keep in their mouth or they like knock themselves mm. out or mm. whatever else. Um, I would like to slip in some skull fire poison into his mouth. Oh yeah. What, what kind of poison? Skull fire poison. It won't kill him. But it will incapacitate. It's like causes incapacitating migraines. Oh, incredible! Okay, incapacitating Jesus. migraines. This okay, so, guy. so, but, but yeah, actually, you might be saving him from actually taking a hot poker to the face, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, yeah. So, um, you creep up behind him. What? What? Like you're helping? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Holding his mouth open. Right. Yeah. And like, yeah. Exactly. Um, I want to see your... Well, first of all, do you have that in your inventory? Yeah, and my you bandolier. Able to, your bandolier, great. And do you have the action you're going to use to pull this off? Can I use Tinker for this? Yeah, it's dealing with... Uh, yeah, you know what? Tinker's used for anatomy, and it's used for poisons. Yes, you can. Okay. I'm going to use Tinker. All uh, right. What kind of, uh, what kind of, what are we at in position? This is risky and it's for standard effect. And okay. it's risky because if they see what you're doing, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, what is, why? Oy, oy, What's oy. happening to my dice tonight? One, yeah. two, two. Oh, brutal. <sighs> what is okay. happening? Is a fairly. Solid pool of dice. Um, I'm going to. Uh, the oh threat was God. that they were going to become more suspicious. Mm -hmm. They do. I'm taking mm -hmm. off two. Sl I'm taking off two oh uh, more pot. Two more. You know pot, what? Two more segments. There's a from chance our clock. that y'all can get out of this. I'm going to resist this, even if it takes Rudyet out of the score. Oh really? I'll take. I'll risk. I'll because if I take one more stress, she'll get traumatized. Okay. You're almost no, get... certainly going to unless you roll a six, right? Right. Um, we're going to make this uh, insight again, I think. Oh, no. my God. Yeah, insight. So, um... Are you serious Eric... you going to do this? 
I, Eric I'm, says, I'm, I'm cool with it. I, do what you want to do. Eric, <laughs> Eric says, hold. What are you mm -hmm. doing? And that is when you can resist. Okay. Let me uh, roll this. Oh, you legend. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, Holy six. shit. It roll was six, a folks. critical. You can clear one stress. <laughs> you get to clear a stress. I do? Yeah. yeah. When if you roll you a critical crit on resistance. <laughs> wow, this is how confident I feel about manipulating these substances. Wow. Like, it's so easy for me. I'm like, look what I've found in his mouth. That's how I put, like, as if I've spotted it. Oh. So the consequence was gonna be that I take away two segments of the, the Jig is Up mm -hmm. clock. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer taking those two segments away. However, they did spy you doing something. So you now have to explain it, which you do successfully. Yeah. But explain, tell them what you explain. Uh, I'm gonna explain that I found this device in his mouth. Like, look what I've found, it's too late. You know, like as if it's in the middle of like triggering. Uh, Eric takes it, what does it look like? Is it like a little pill, a little capsule? Yeah. Hmm. Care to explain this, Mr. Crofty? <laughs> I, say, I don't know, it's not mine. I don't know how to hold things in the mouth. <laughs> I would have thought that the uh, that the gray cloaks would have sent a better quality of a better quality of spy into your outfit, but it seems they're not exactly sending their best and brightest. Damn it! Yeah. I was really hoping it was going to go off. Actually, I was just trying to find him in the act. Meanwhile, uh, 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 two soul, uh, two two. Um, Two sailors are heading down the corridor so, looking for Valkos. If they are, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tick off another um, uh, bit of my um, arcane. Uh, I'm going to tick off arcane implements, right? And I'm going to okay. take a vial of e e electroplasm and I'm going to splay it over the, uh, over the lock um, using my finesse to kind of look as if someone else was trying to break in here, not me, and I'm going to turn around and start walking backwards towards uh, towards the, the the sailors. The sailors who are looking for you. Yeah. So you're you're pouring electroplasm over the lock in an effort to hide that it was uh, you or or someone using a lock pick. Is that right? So yeah. So it's not, it's it's almost like as if it's. It's some. It's like I would. I would use a lockpick, right? Any <laughs> standard person would use a lockpick, but who would use electroplasm to try and break into a lock? This is my thing. It's like I'm trying to say, right. like it's it's not my handprint, you know? It's it's mm. it's almost like putting gunpowder to uh to to disguise. Like okay, this is actually someone was meticulously trying something here but failed, and really that's when a ghost I, came through. Do you know what I mean? Like it could be something. It could be something quite creepy. You know? That's it what I'm that. trying to. So yeah. So then I'm I'm kind of like oh fucking like there's there's something weird here. So then. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm basically trying to hide the fact that it was not only a lock pick that tried to break in here, but like, um, but it was, you know, there's something, there's something else going on, on around here. All right. I'm not going to make you roll to do that. Mm. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to just pour electroplasm onto the lock. Mm. And I can tell you that when you do, there is sort of like a, like the lock was, uh, a power lock of some sort, a level five lock, right? So it had some sort of powered component to it and you've weirdly kind of shorted it out now. And that is when the guys approach and go, Velkos, the Severosi. How many are there? There are two. Okay. <laughs> Velkos, the Severosi. <laughs> we were sent to fetch you. You're late for your meeting. I need you two with me. Someone's in there. And I point to the lock. They look at it, and then they look at you, and they're trying to decide whether to believe you, and you need an action to convince them. I'm gonna command. That's what I'm gonna do. You're gonna command? Okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm gonna call this desperate for, <sighs> uh, for standard effect. So it's desperate because 
if you fail, they are full out going to attack, and that means the ship's probably going to go on alert. <laughs> Would you oh like a devil's bargain? Yes. Okay. The devil's Ooh. bargain is... Oh, for an God. extra die. Yeah, it's for an extra die. The devil's bargain is... Uh, you... You can't take anything from this office once you get inside. Mm. It'll be too suspicious. Be fucking hell. God, okay. Forget that. No, I'm going to go for it. Luck of the die, baby. Here okay. we go. Four. Four. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Success. I could one die on that. <laughs> Just yeah, one. No. Just Success, no. with a Success with a consequence. They eye you warily, and a segment comes off of the jig is up clock. Mm. Mm -hmm. But sure. are we one that, away? You are two away. Six, two think. away. Okay. Okay. Uh, but they do um, examine the lock. They see that it's shorted out uh, and that it looks weird. And they um, they push open the door, and you are looking at a large, beautiful, well appointed captain's quarters with an enormous circular window that would, uh, while this thing was out sea, would look out on the billowing waves. And there are, you know, fine wooden shelves, built-ins with lots of books and uh, charts. Uh, there's a huge desk and uh, where uh, that's the thing you first come into where the captain might meet people who come uh, into his sort of office area to be briefed by him. And then if you go over to the left into sort of a, a large alcove, that is where the personal sleeping quarters and living quarters is. Okay. They look at each other and they look at you. You heard someone in here. It's not that I heard someone. I know someone is in here. Search the room. Search. The, I will check into the personal quarters. <laughs> um, they start searching the room. Let's see how well they do. And what are you doing? I'm going into the personal quarters to see if I can find any loose paperwork or anything that might be incriminating. Okay, great. Uh, what are you using to search? Can I use my finesse? Your finesse, meaning that you are what? How are you I'm, using finesse? Well, How are you using your fine dexterity? So this is the thing. I think I'm, again, uh, you know, it's because we know we all know that we're searching stuff here, right? That's the that's the that's the vibe. We're looking. We're looking for someone. But my fingers are here to snag or take anything that looks incriminating or of value, and um, kind of slide it into your and slide it into my into into my yeah into my that's uh, finesse my overalls. That's mm. for sure finesse. Mm. So um, here's how it's gonna work. This is desperate for great effect. Okay. If you succeed, you're gonna get something cool. Okay. If you fail. I'm ticking off two more segments and the entire operation is over. Or at least it's it changed. Yeah. And what's the devil's bargain if I want to get an extra die? The devil's bargain is the same as before. You can look at this thing and learn but something, but you can't take it because mm. they're they're too close to you, they're looking. Yeah, I feel you. Alright, no, don't worry about that. Sex, baby! Go yes. on! My, God. <laughs> My man. Uh, you clutch. You, you <sighs> very surreptitiously slide your fingers under the mattress of his bed, and you pull out a thin leather-bound volume. Flicking it open, you see that it is filled in fine handwriting. I take it, and I come you out. Do, you do this without anybody seeing you do it. They then look at you and go, there's no one here. Did you see anything or anyone? Anything incriminating? Nothing. Oh, and I just go out and just start walking out. Hey, where do and you I think you're going? To the boiler room to get more answers. Perhaps maybe he can, the, the foolish mole can tell us more what we can find out. Very well. Let us return to the boiler room 
and let us have uh, this is a moment before Valkos and these guys enter and so where do we leave off <laughs> oh yeah they discovered that he was trying to use some sort of chemical um, let's see if Eric can tell what this thing is I, do you want to know about skull fire poison? Because I feel like it's likely he does because it is made of overly, like, fumes from, like, heated leviathan blood, like, oh. it's in it. Except that he rolled poorly. Damn. He, he doesn't Eric. know what it is. Miss Bell Rose, what is this? This is uh, commonly used by... by spies, the likes, whatever it is, a contingency plan if you need to take yourself out from questioning. A suicide pill. Something like it. It's not quite so lethal. You would still survive in the end, you see. Well, you won't find that you get an easy ticket out of here, Mr. Crofty. No. You're going to tell us who... Well, we know who you work for. You're going to tell us what you've learned. What have you told the Grey Cloaks? And he slaps him across the face. I haven't told him anything. I haven't told him anything. What have you told the Grey Cloaks? He slaps him again. <laughs> I haven't told them. And now he's like, Ekaprag. Yes. Burn him. Hmm. It's a shame your tongue wasn't more loose. Because I'm about to burn it to a stump. No, not the tongue, Ekkrag. <laughs> we need him to talk. Oh, yes, of course. And start with um, another area. I mean, it can be something sensitive, just mm. not something he uses to talk. Don't put him into shock just yet. Yes, of course. Um, and here is where I can't help but like turn away. I think she is like turned away and is like facing the truly wall. An, truly a nightmare. Truly a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and at that moment, Valkos and the two guys enter. Great. I come in and I'm like, wait. They all look, turn to look at you. Ah, Mr. Valkos, were you enjoying the tour of the ship you were taking without our permission? Check him for ele ele electroplasm. See if he has any on him. What? Why? These two fellows that you sent to search for me can attest to the fact that your captain's quarters were broken into with electroplasm. They shorted out the lock, sir. Ah, search him. Uh, yes, uh, we already uh, did, sir. Well, what did he have in his effects? Any electroplasmic uh, items? And they start heading over toward a table covered in the things that, uh, not covered, but that has the, the few things that he held on him. If he doesn't have electroplasm, then yes, he may be a mole, but he knows someone who probably does. Killing him now will not help anyone. Um, all right, they're heading over toward the table and they look through his meager accoutrement and they find no empty vials of any sort or no electroplasmic devices. And they turn to Eric and they go, nothing. It doesn't mean anything. He could have thrown it out or stashed it somewhere. It could be that he's here in this room creating a diversion for his little partner. Indeed. Good, th good thing go ahead. Mr. Valkos was able to uh, cover our flank. Yes, although I'll need to contact the captain and have him look over his things to make sure nothing was disturbed. Yes, of course. Get the captain for me. Oh, wait, that's not going to be good. Um, wait, did you, you succeeded on your, like on your role to take stuff like discreetly yeah. though. Oh yeah, yeah. he ha he has it. it. Look, in a way, the score is so we far just successful. Gotta, yeah, we just have we to- We gotta get leave. out of here. Yeah, yeah we yeah. have, we need to- mm -hmm. 
Because, right, if that captain checks his stuff, we're Wait, screwed. wait, wait. Wait. You know that you've got some... You know that they're in your operation. They don't yet know that, um... Remind me one more time of this guy's name. Del... Del, Del Crofty? Del Crofty. Del Crofty. <laughs> they don't yet know that Mr. Crofty has been found out. If you go five alarms on them, then they'll know the jig is up. They'll pull mm. out. You... Though you... You may stop briefly their casing of your operation, you won't be able to trace it right back to its source and know exactly what they've got. We're not close enough with them yet to know precisely what it is they're after. Unless you've got some idea. He, uh, Eric is kind of thinking about everything you just said to him. And at that moment, I will use my arcane sight to listen to his mind. Okay. Does that cost you stress or anything? It does indeed. One stress. Okay. He's a little bit confused about what he should do, and he doesn't want to screw this up. But he's thinking that he's got to lock down the ship, and he's about Mm -hmm. to give the order to do that, meaning no one gets on or off. Okay. And Um, uh, at that moment, someone is also bringing him, like, a weird phone that's, like, attached to the wall. Ostensibly right, so we can talk to the captain. Five mm-hmm. sailors in here. And yeah, Eric. we need. Basically, I'm saying, okay, well, I, that's all I got. Um, I was really pro. Also, I should clarify what I was hoping to get, which is like by saying, like, what it is they're after. Like, to, to oh. see if there's anything in his brain that's like. Mm. I could clarify what they're keeping secret. Um. I think it's fair for you to do that and for you to assume that it might come into his mind. And he's thinking they must not learn about the migrations. Migrations. Great. Um, great. Um, we, okay. Um, it's like, we need to be going. Got meetings with, Hutch, Nessa. Right? We need to keep our exchange of information a two-way street. We cannot alert them. They must think they're still sitting right in the cafe seat. Would you have a meeting with them tonight? Yes. Odd that you didn't mention it before. Well, I I certainly didn't, uh, I didn't think that you'd be so quick to ensnare the, um, individual in question. Right. We might have needed more information to help pinpoint them. This is all at your request, to get more information on the Grey Cloaks for you. No, I'm sorry, I can't let you leave. No, I have to lock down the entire ship. Hello! Oh, God, all right, I'm gonna use standstill poison on him. Whoa! Get on him? Yeah, I need him to stop. <laughs> okay. Um, this is ex- what I'm good at. This is all explain. I'm g- explain what you're doing exactly, because he's <gasps> just he's just grabbed the phone and said, "Hello, Captain." I'm just going to inject him. I take out a syringe and I just inject him with very stand obvi- cell poison. Very obviously. Well, you know, right in front of it. I don't try to be obvious. You know, I just like do it directly into his gut. <laughs> okay. Yogi. Um, I think that I, this is comes as such a surprise that I'm going to go ahead and allow you to do that. And the reaction that you get is going to be the real problem. Suddenly all the guards, all the, uh, all the sailors are like, Hey, hoy, what are you doing? And, and he's like, like, you hear on the other line, hello, hello. And he's just like, yeah, I could hang up that phone. <laughs> I'm just going to hang up that phone and say, that goes. You uh, push the phone out of his. You push the phone out of his hand, and it goes and reels back to the wall. Uh Clack. Uh Yeah. I'm like, let's just all fucking book it. (laughs) Let's just fucking run now. (laughs) I just start 
Run in. just take out everyone in I'm, this room. Absolutely not, man. I got one no. more stress. Like going, well, okay, you know what? No, I've only got one more stress left. Well, actually, okay. So do I. <laughs> no, because they're tier five. So I think uh, like the only I will best say I will say that some things are going to be tier five on this ship. Certain opponents, certain specific people you meet may not be fully tier five, if that makes sense. Yes. So I have think like the superhuman ability. I do. But the problem is, is that it, I, I have to push myself. So oh, I push myself oh, out oh, of the oh. game. I so see. I think Sorry. if that's the case, then what I'm going to do is wait. Why do you, have you got like a smoke bomb or some shit that we could use to yeah, run out I of do. here? I do have a smoke bomb. <laughs> I dropped a smoke bomb! <laughs> uh, do you? Let's go. I do, I do have one. Okay, so here it. we go. Now I want an action from Juliette Belrose. Yeah. Here's the deal. It is desperate for great effect. And here's how it works. If you succeed, the smoke bomb goes down and you guys can run. These guys don't grab you. If you fail, these guys start start attacking and they get one hit in on you, Juliet, because you are busy preparing yeah. and setting off a smoke bomb. Okay? Yeah. So you okay. will take harm if you fail this. Can what is your current harm? Two level one harms, is that right? Two level ones and one level two. Okay, you'll take another level two harm okay. if you, um, yeah. I now can I use Tinker in that I'm going to need the knowledge to place this specifically to mess them up and not so much us because the smoke bomb does like make it difficult to breathe and you're using one of your bombs absolutely yeah. you can use Tinker okay you said this is desperate yeah and you don't want to push effect. yourself because you're full of stress right yeah okay um, um I, I just want to be transparent. I don't know if this would affect this, though. Is being bruised going to make me less? Oh, thank you for being transparent. I, like, I'm bruised and terrified. Oh, yeah. Terrified it affected the social, which makes sense. Is bruised going to affect? I don't know what this falls into. Tinkering to drop a bomb? Would bruised affect that? No. I, okay. I, you're you're not fighting. You're not you know you're not physically fighting someone. You're not asking to like lift a heavy door or something, which I think bruised would affect. Yeah. I think you're like click 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 toss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I don't Great. think bruised would affect. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Success, Success with a consequence. Success with a consequence. The consequence is that uh, because it was desperate, I think one of you, a guard grabs. The other two, you're already out on the deck of the ship. But one of you, a guard managed to get a hold of. Now he doesn't have you in a bear hug, but he's like grabbed onto the back of your coat or something. Which I'll one of you was it? I'll volunteer. Okay, they have a hold of Ekaprag Wodi, Ne Ekphelia. The other two, Valkos and Juliet, you are out on the deck of the ship. You have, uh, have evaded them. The smoke bomb has gone off in the boiler room. It is pitch black in there now. There's just like the hint of like some like fiery light like in the midst of this like haze. And one of the uh, guards managed to just luck into like grabbing onto the back of Ekphelia. Ekphelia, what do you do? Um, okay, we've already, we've we've gone like this. The my little stiletto comes out and it goes like right into this guy. Action, <laughs> finesse, finesse. I'll allow it, and let's call this uh, desperate for standard effect. If you fail, he's going to hurt you. Right? Okay. He's going to get a blow in on you. I got a five. A five. Yes. Success with a consequence. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you stab him, but the consequence is that while you take him out, another guy grabs you. Okay. Oh my God, what? <laughs> sure, Oh, so I'm just grabbed. Okay, I mean, I'm f fighting to disengage with them. I'm okay, another one. You wanna take on another one? Yeah. Gonna use finesse again? Or actually, I might just try to wrench myself free. That's a good idea. <laughs> Wrench I mean, yourself all... free and run? Yeah. What action um, are you going to use? 
slippery. I feel like I always fall back on finesse, but it seems like trying to wriggle out of this is, is kind of apropos. That's Ekaprag's uh, stock in trade. So yes. I will allow it again. This time it is... This time, let's 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 raise the stakes here, because we're at the end of today's yep. session. This is desperate for great effect. If okay. you succeed, you get out. You're on the deck with Juliet and Valkos. If you fail, they all they all tackle you. Okay. And we end the session with Ekphelia having become a prisoner of the Leviathan Hunters. Here we go. Okay, it's a four, a four, and a three. <laughs> so a four. Success with a consequence. Do I get? Do they land a blow? Uh, they don't land a blow. The consequence is this: Eric comes through the haze, and he sees you behave in a certain way, like an animal. You reveal your true nature. How do you do that? What do you do? Maybe okay. it's not a feral. What do you do exactly? Great. I um, so that was another desperate action. <laughs> so one of the strictures of my of this of this character is bestial. When I suffer physical harm or overindulge my vice, I think I've not technically suffered physical harm in game terms, but enough of these like guys have like jostled me. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that yeah, like. That what the, what he sees in the red mist of the boiler room is like in order to get out of this guy's grasp, just a snaky and serpentine, like dislocation of various body parts has seemed to take place, and suddenly it's like the shoulder is way deeper than it should be, um, like the jaw seems to twist off to one side as like the neck kind of like moves in like an uncanny way out of this. A uh, person's grasp and sort of reform, and and the back as it all comes together is like bunched and and uh, like a like a toy a coiled spring, and the whole thing suggests not a human being but some sort of cornered serpent. What are you? And you're out. You you uh, you leap and wriggle your way out onto the deck. And now you're all standing shoulder to shoulder on the edge of the deck, looking over the water. Grappling hook, escape time. Okay, Chung! the grappling hook goes hurling over to the docks. And uh, do you all just grab on a Juliet and swing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all just Batman out of there. And you Batman out of there. Score complete! <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> Operation Get a Book. Oh my god. What was in we, the book? We did it. What was in the book? We don't what I was love in it. The book? We, we fucking did it. You did it. What was, what's we in the it. book? What's it worth? We will find out when we get into some downtime next time on Haunted City. Guys, you pulled it out against all odds. That was insane. <laughs> That was truly <laughs> insane. Yeah, it's so Congratulations. Strange. It was uh, strange and harrowing as usual. We'll be back next week with more Haunted City. Until then, thank you, Abu Salim, Josephine McAdam, and Ross Bryant. I love you. Good night for now. <laughs> <laughs>